Okay, well, time for another roadside find video. Really got to stop doing this because I'm sure it's not healthy, but you know, whatever. Anyway, so what are we looking at here? Is this some kind of computer? Well, no, it's a speaker, which I've already started opening. Also found this car amplifier. It's in a bit of a sorry state, but I thought what we would do, because I don't really actually need these, but I just thought I'd take them anyway, because they were just sitting there. So we take a little look inside and see what's actually there. First of all, we're going to start with this. So I'll just get that out the way. So this is more of an equipment autopsy video. Also, I am not using my laptop to record this on. I am recording this. Got the camera connected up to old Franken PC. So let's see how that handles this. You can hear the hard drive going like mad. The thing is, Franken PC has much better sound than my laptop does. That's the thing. And it's much easier just to connect up to it. But anyway, <clears throat> yeah. The reason why this panel is so bashed up is because I was trying to take this panel out to see what was behind it. And I didn't realise there were still a couple of screws holding on. I just thought they were holding the thing to the circuit board, but they weren't. Anyway, it would be better if I stand this up when I do this. So let's pull out this main circuit board and see what we have inside. As if it will come out. Yeah. This is what I like about this. Okay, we'll just put that, move that over to one side, hopefully without squashing anything. The whole power supply and audio module just slides right out and that makes it very nice and easy to service. I don't know why other people don't make things like this. Fans come out, I don't know where that was. I mean, I know that was screwed in there, but it's sort of got itself all, yeah. Now the thing is I cannot use, the reason, main reason why I cannot use this is because it has this weird ass connector where it communicates with all the other stuff that it would have been connected to. And I don't know what connections are on that. Also, I don't have the remote for this, so... It'd be kind of pointless powering it up to see if it still works because I probably won't be able to get anything out of it. This is more just a mere autopsy video anyway, so anyway, here's the, uh, here's, here's the power supply with a rather nice big transformer. I might see if I can run a ZVS flyback driver off that and see if that works. Yeah, see how well that handles it. Anyway, just before I toss this aside, let's take a look at this from the other side. And as you can probably right away see, no nice beefy transistors or anything like that that I could use. Nope. Everything is all contained, all the amplifying is done in this one integrated circuit. There really is almost nothing to it. we got a few transistors down there. This chip here, I don't know what that does, but um, there is quite a bit in there. But compare that to... Just the amplifier section of this old Sony amplifier here, look at that, I mean, there's tons of stuff in this, and this is just the output stage. Now, I was hoping that this would have a nice big toroidal transformer in it that I could use, but no, just a standard iron core transformer. What I can use from this though, is the heatsink. Got a nice big heatsink there. So, what about this speaker? How good does this speaker sound? Well, I'm not going to try it on its own amplifier because I don't even know if that works. But first, and surprisingly, I don't think this is the heaviest part of it. I think the power supply and amplifier board is the heaviest part of that. Let me just get something to prop this up with. I'll just get one of those boxes that are sent. Let's take a look under the speaker. Let's see what's there. Okay. 
Watch my hand could just go round and round and round and round and round like an electric screwdriver while I'm doing this. That would make things so much easier. Right, let's get this speaker out. Wow, look at the size of that magnet. I really didn't expect they'd put something that big on it, on something like this. And as you can see in there, absolutely no wadding. And there's the big bass reflex spot. Anyway, I'll just put the speaker back in and we'll have a listen to how this sounds. Okay, so here we go. Here it is hooked up to my amplifier. Let's give it a listen. I'm not going to put it on too loud because I don't want to disturb anyone. Okay, well that's enough of that, because I don't really want to disturb anyone too much with that. Well, as can be expected, there's a lot of bass. There does seem to be a little bit of a mid-range. does seem to be a little bit mid-range heavy as well, but tons of bass. And for those of you asking, because I know I'm going to get pestered and pestered and pestered about this, I'm going to get about a billion comments in asking, what's the song you used? What's the song you used? What's the song you used? So I'm just going to say, right now, the song is, well, was originally called Last Ninja Starts School, which is a chip tune, which I've redone in a sort of soft rock style. And no, it cannot be found anywhere. Well, you can find the original chip version of it, of course, but... I will put this song in at the end of the video. I'm going to do a time lapse, so you'll get to hear it then anyway. Here's the crusty old car amplifier I found, so uh, we're just going to take a little look inside this. For some reason, it's all done with these hexagon screws. I don't know why. I don't know why they just didn't use plain Phillips head screws for this. It's kind of weird. Okay, this is the editor here because, well, cool dude Clem. And I'm having to dub over the audio in this video from now on because there is no audio. My microphone decided to die. So I'm having to use a pair of headphones as the microphone and narrate what's actually going on in the video. So here we go. So here's that amplifier with all but one of the screws removed because... There is just no way I can get that other screw out. The head's completely mashed up. But anyway, I'm going to open this. Prepare for crustiness. Oh my god, look at that. Actually, it's not quite as bad as I thought it would be. Looks like they've gone to quite a lot of trouble to filter the power coming in. And I can expect that from something like this that's going to be powered from an unstable car supply. I think we also have a DC-DC step-up converter in here. Because this thing here that looks like an inductor, well, that's being used as a transformer because it says... in Right in there it says T1. And I think behind this clip here and this clip here we've got the output transistors for the amplifier. Got a couple of big resistors there that you would usually find connecting the transistors together, so I'm guessing this is the amplifier part. Big bus bar right there for handling the current. So I'm pretty sure all this section round here is being used to step up the voltage because 12 volts alone really isn't going to give you much power. There's a couple of transistors under here, I believe those are the switching transistors for the DC-DC converter. And over here we got a couple of diodes, and you can see also a couple of capacitors. So this part of the thing definitely looks like some kind of power supply. My guess is some kind of step-up, like I said before, some kind of step-up DC-DC converter. 
up here this appears to be the here's the preamp and the equalization and in the middle here we've got the actual amplifier section itself and I appear to be saying a whole bunch of other stuff here but because the sound wasn't working I have absolutely no idea what I was saying I might have just been going and you can't hear right what I say anyway wrap this bit up I would try to get the amplifier board out but I have absolutely no idea how it comes out this front bit has come out but that's about all I can do so anyway that's the day's junk finds that's the day's junk finds <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to whip that transformer out of there and see how well it works as powering a ZVS flyback driver. Right, okay. I just recorded a whole but section of video, not realising that my microphone wasn't working, so I was just going... And you couldn't hear a word I was saying, and upon playing that video back, finding there was no sound in it, I practically destroyed the computer, so I don't know, in a fit of mad rage, so I don't know when this... I don't know when I'm going to get to editing this, but still. So anyway, yes, I'm having to use my laptops, I mean having to use my cameras, I mean having to use my webcams! Microphone, I will get it out. Anyway, here's the transformer out of that thing. And I've gone through all the output pins with my meter, and as you can see, I've marked where each winding is, so we've got one winding there, I'm going to talk quite softly because I'm right up close to the webcam's microphone and there is no automatic level control on that so I'm probably overdriving it already anyway we've got one winding there one winding there one winding there and across these two pins one winding there, I don't know why that other winding so far away but yeah. anyway this one and this one appear to be the high amperage winding because as you can see, as you can probably see, that's going to a thicker trace on the circuit board and they've doubled up the wires that those are connected to. And also, I have done, tested the primary to make sure that's okay. Because you never know, they could have thrown it out because maybe the transformer wasn't working. Because the primary could have been opened or completely shorted, but upon testing this, it's about 8 ohms, so everything checks out. Anyway, what we want to do is double up these windings here, put those in parallel, and see how well this powers a ZVS or a ZVS, however you want to say it. Flyback. <coughs> Let's take a look at some of the voltages. Let's see what the output voltages of this transformer is. Okay, first of all, let's see what we've got between these two connections here. We have 5.4 volts. <coughs> we've got, here we've got 14 and a half. So let's test these high current windings, probably about 20 volts or something like that. Alright, we've got 24. 4 volts across those two, and across these two we have about the same. Do we have anything between these two? Well, surprisingly we do, we got about 21 volts, but that could be just capacitive there. Let's just make sure about that. Got a little LED here. If the LED lights up when I connect it between these two, we'll know we we do have some current there. No, nope, the LED does not light up. Because I don't know if you could see it. Put the LED up a little bit so you can see it glow. Oh, my dinner's ready now. Now I've got to stop and eat. But anyway, as you can see. The LED lights up there, if I could just get that on there, and it should light up between here and here, as you can see it does, but does not light up between here and here. So, 
shouldn't be any problem connecting those two together because what I want to do is connect those two together then measure the voltage we get between there and there right okay now I've connected these two together so we're gonna see if there's a if, if this is in phase and if I can get my meter to turn on so anyway, simply what I'm going to do is a measure between this point here and this point here and if we get 48 volts or whatever probably more around 49 volts we'll know that this point here and this point here are out of phase but if they're in phase we'll get nothing or very close to nothing so let's see what we got of course it would also help if the meter was on volts good thing I didn't have that in the amps jack okay well strangely enough and I don't know how that's actually doing that but we've got 23 volts that doesn't seem to okay that doesn't make much sense whatsoever I was expecting to get either 48 volts or nothing at all so unless of course that's not connected very good ah oh, there we go 49 volts so that means that is out of phase so I could actually use that as a center tap but that's not what I'm going to do you see I want to get as much <clears throat> I want to get as much current out of this transformer so what we need to do is connect that point there to that point there and that point there to that point there we'll get about 24 volts with lots of current okay time to wrap this video up now because it's probably gone on for about seven hours of me just rabbiting on anyway we're about to test the ZVS driver on this transformer and see how well it performs so let's just go over how this is all wired up Put a thermistor between the transformer and the AC line, you know, that mains, to limit the inrush current. And I don't know how well I've got the camera position because the laptop screen is right behind me, but you might be able to see how I've wired the secondaries there in parallel. So we get the same voltage but twice the current. So let's give this a little test and see. And by the way, this is the ground wire that I'm holding here, so there's no, uh, I'm not going to shut myself on that. I'd say that's working pretty good. Nice big arc. Let's just do that in low light. Yeah, it's a strike and it cool. Yeah. Well, that's it. I'm going to wrap this video up now. So, scrap fine. Pretty good transformer there, and until next time, goodbye.